the secret to having everything you need, control the domino effect in your mind, and become the person you were always meant to be by letting go of this one thing. Welcome to No Bow Tie, where we conquer emptiness and frustration, discover our uniqueness, and live with relentless joy. I'm John No Bow Tie's Foboda, author and musician. Today's focus is going to be how to let go of that discouragement of not getting what you really want in life. Be sure to subscribe. I write about my friend Jerry a lot. He, like you, deserves a life of satisfaction, but he often falls short of getting what he really wants in life, that he doesn't understand how to define it, achieve it, possess it, and move on beyond it to continue a happy life, to continue getting a life of satisfaction with purpose and passion engaged and in motion. Does this sound familiar to you? And like you, he has some of everything that he needs to put his ideas in place, and get what he wants. He has some ideas. He has some talent, some money, some people in his life. He has some resources. He has some technical ability. He has some of everything that is really required to achieve what you want in life. But do you ever find that just as you're working hard toward your goal, you find out that a sense of demotivation wells up in you and doubt kicks in and you let go of that energy that's going to take you to the finish line and it almost feels like you're deflated to starting over. And then perhaps you do. Do you ever get so wrapped up in the doubt that the energy of doubt is bigger than the energy of succeeding and achieving your idea? Jerry told me of a pattern that he noticed each time that he almost gets to the goal and lets go of it. He noticed that he's compelled toward dwelling on the past and how he used to have ambition and passion, and now it just doesn't seem that way. And he would also focus on the challenges that hold him back rather than the changes that will move him forward. We'll talk more about this one. This is a big one. We'll talk more about it in length. And the third thing that always kicked in was a sense of resistance, of doubt, and sometimes blame of being frustrated and not getting what he wants and to to stop in the pursuit because doubt kicks in. And just like a pit in the stomach, it makes you feel like you are paralyzed in the pursuit and that it's just not worth it anymore, sometimes losing sight of how meaningful it once was. And last, the most powerful part of the process that we're kicking, and that was procrastination. Procrastination would become such a habit that it was a, a part of the routines. Do you ever do that where you're always going to do something later, especially an important something, putting it off till tomorrow when really you do have the time today, but you're, you're sure you're going to do it tomorrow. And it's a sickening feeling to know that you have the power of control in you to create the things that you want, but the source, you, are actually agreeing to wait, to do it later. It's a safety net. This is one of the biggest subjects that we will explore in all of the podcasts that you're going to watch. He and I, we went fishing a lot. And one time while we were walking to the fishing hole, He spoke to me openly about some things that he had been learning because we talk about this a lot and we're always engaging in the lessons that will break through that wall to move him forward. And when they're exercised, it's a beautiful thing what you can achieve by, by employing them and actually reaching and grasping what you really want. And one time he said, you know, I've been thinking about what we talked about. And I, was, I really thought you had a lot of nerve to tell me that I had a little bit of everything that I need in life to achieve the goals that are most important to me. I, couldn't, I could hardly digest it that you were putting in my face that it's available to me and all I have to do is focus on getting it because I have the resources. We sat down on the lake's edge and I threw a bass lure out and I could hear it just kind of go kerplunk in the water. We're listening to the waves. And he said, you know, the truth is, I really don't need to change my life as much as my way of thinking. I have noticed that when my thinking is terrible and negative and destructive, 
and another day my thinking is very positive and productive, that not much has changed in my life. It was always my thinking that was propelling my view of my life and the amount of motivation that I have. And then he said, I think this is core to forcing me to think that my life is unachievable, that the things that I want can't be had, that it's all in my thinking, because behind every action is a thought that propels it. And just as much as my thoughts motivate me, my thoughts are also what keeps me unmotivated. Procrastination that he has as almost an addiction was just propelled by continual thoughts that he can control. Because let's face it, your thoughts are one of the only things that you truly own. And then I got a good strike at my fishing line. I pulled in a pretty good sized bass, but I threw it back. And he said, I realize the problem is that I'm not taking responsibility for what I can control. And he was referring to his thoughts. He said, I never realized that thoughts are something I can control. And the longer that I don't, the sooner that they act against me. If you have any of the same thoughts as Jerry, it's time to get what you want. It's time to check in with your thoughts on a regular basis and change them in favor of your pursuit. Change them in favor of the momentum you can sustain. Thoughts are automatic. You, you Generally, you can't really control your automatic thought, but thinking is the process of your thoughts. When you have a thought, what you do with it, you can take a responsibility for that. You can turn that around and say, hey, what is the best way to handle my thoughts? Not just the situation, but to handle your thoughts. And this is where your happiness will be found. This little, this little nugget of self-control will ignite a flame in you that's going to burn every time that you use it wisely. It'll, it'll burn into the fire that will become your life with momentum and a gravitational pull out and forward rather than imploding in and downward. And you'll find that fire will burn away everything that's holding you back, like procrastination. Let's take procrastination as an example. Procrastination diminishes the energy and excitement of any endeavor. And it doesn't matter. Any time that you procrastinate, you are putting a gap between yourself and the initial energy, the, the excitement and satisfaction, the vision that you had. And you're letting time fill in a persuasive gap that suggests not doing it is the better way. Because not doing something is always easier than doing something. It Procrastination is distorted thought in motion. And procrastination has no logical place in getting what you want. Sometimes your problem is caused by believing and supporting the stagnation. And you can, you can check it by how often you let procrastination be a part of the routine. You can get rid of it. Take time to recognize the procrastination. Stop and just do it. Do it, then decide if you should have. And you might make some mistakes, but you're in motion now toward what you want. And those mistakes, they are jewels. Anytime you make a mistake, you can immediately say, hey, this is not the way to do it. Let's try another way. And generally, you're going to be in motion toward what you want. Work hard and turn that procrastination into something that is buried, something that used to be a part of you. But now, it's you've got control over it. That's something that you don't have to let block your success. And if you are tired and desperate to change the cycle, be sure to watch the next episode. It's crucial. It's going to give you perfect steps for stepping out of that routine and stepping into the next, the next part of your life, which is where you're going to start to taste who you are in a bigger and better way. I'm going to leave you by taking the bow tie out of a musical piece by Scarlatti. And I want you to just take a guess of who the man is that's accompanying me in the performance.